Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here. Welcome back to another Sublime Text tutorial video, the topic of which this week is once again Terminus, just like it was last week. And that's because I was recently asked a question about how to do something with Terminus, and I thought this was a great opportunity to discuss that very topic. And uh, it has to do with setting up a REPL environment inside of Sublime Text, but using Terminus instead of Sublime REPL. <laughs> If you're unfamiliar with what a REPL is, it stands for Read, Evaluate, Print, Loop, and is very common in scripting languages and actually has a basis in Lisp way back in the day as well. Now, the stages of this are read, read some input from you, such as a line of code, an expression, a function call, something of that nature. Evaluate that line of code, assign a value, call a function, etc. Print the result of that so you can see what it actually did, if anything, and then loop back to the top and do it again. Now, you've probably seen something like this, even if you didn't realize that's what it was. It's used by a lot of things. For example, inside of Sublime Text itself, if you go into the console, you can enter arbitrary lines of text and you will see them executing. The same thing can also be done inside of the console of web browsers as well, at least browsers that have developer tools. You can execute arbitrary lines of code in there. This is also possible in a lot of scripting languages, for example, Lua, Python, and even Node.js. These are all examples of three different types of scripting languages that have an interpreter, or really a shell, if you will, where if you run it and don't tell it what file to execute, it drops you immediately into an interactive environment where you can enter lines of code one at a time and see what the evaluated results of that program actually are. What we're going to be doing today is setting up an environment to do something like that inside of Sublime Text using the Terminus package. Now, there is a package that is dedicated to something like this. It's called Sublime REPL. It's a very popular package. I personally prefer and recommend Terminus if you want to do something like this because, in my opinion, it's a lot easier to set up. And also, if it's the sort of thing that matters to you, Terminus is more actively maintained than Sublime REPL is. Now, what we're actually going to be seeing here is how we can take existing functionality in Sublime that we've already covered in previous videos, just a tiny little bit of plugin code that I'm going to share with you in just a moment, and click it together like Lego bricks to come up with something that is greater than the sum of its parts. And if there's anything to take away from all of the videos and tutorials here on the channel, it's that with a little bit of knowledge of Sublime and how it works, you can really customize it and make its editing environment your own. And uh, to that end, a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about or covering in today's video is stuff that we've already covered in previous lessons. So we're not going to go into a ton of detail. If you're someone that's been following me for a while here on the channel, hey, thanks so much for your support. This is probably stuff that you're familiar with. It's old hat by now. But if there's anything that is a little bit sketchy, you don't use it nearly often enough to remember, or you're a new supporter of the channel and you're here for perhaps the first time, don't worry. Uh, down in the description of this video is a list of all the other videos on the channel that cover the key topics that you need to know to get any of this work. So if any of this stuff doesn't make any sense, uh, that is the place to go for that. And additionally, down there uh, in the description is a link to all of the files that we'll see in today's lesson. So if you want to try this out yourself, you don't have to transcribe anything. You just go ahead and pluck the files from there. And if you are a new subscriber, or if you haven't already done so, perhaps now is a great time while you're down there in the description to use those buttons to show your support and thumb subscribe and share as you deem appropriate and ring the bell notification icon if you want to know when new videos become available on the channel. Now, speaking of files that are linked below, there are three of them, and the first one is a standard build system. This is a very common uh, Terminus build system for executing Python in a tab, and we've also carried out the simple, uh, the simple expediency of shifting it off to the right because you generally want to see your code and uh, a REPL running at the same time for a lot of experiences like this. This is different from a standard build in two ways. First, uh, it uses the uh, Terminus tag uh, function here in the build to, to apply an arbitrary tag, which I've just chosen as Python REPL because that's what this is. We learned in the last lesson that this is all about tagging a, a terminal in 
Sublime text inside of Terminus uniquely so that a Terminus will just keep reusing it. But as we'll see, we can also use that to direct information to a specific terminal, which is of uh, paramount importance if you happen to have more than one terminal open in a window at any given time. And the other thing is we've added the minus I argument to Python. That's an argument that tells it that after it finishes running whatever program you give it, it should go interactive and go into its REPL read evaluate print loop so you can go ahead and execute arbitrary lines of code. And uh, other environments probably do something similar. Uh, Lua, for example, does. Node.js has a REPL built in. I'm unfamiliar with it enough to know if there's a way to do it from the command line like this, but there's probably a way to do it and uh, so on. Uh, the second thing we're going to look at here is key bindings and specifically three different key bindings because this all centers around the idea that Terminus has a built-in command named Terminus send string. And using that command, which is outlined in the readme of the Terminus package, Package, which you can find on the packagecontrol.io page for said package. Now you can send an arbitrary string directly to either the first terminal in the window that happens to be visible, the first terminal, or a terminal with a specific tag, which is what we're doing here. And we have that bound to a key. We're going to cover that in just a second. But we also have a plugin that provides an additional command that basically wraps terminus send string, uh, but it sends selected text or the whole content of a file over to terminus instead of a hard-coded uh, string of text. And all three of these key bindings also have context on them as well. Specifically, they have two contexts each, one that makes sure that these bindings are only available in Python because we're dealing with Python files here, so we want to make sure that uh, everything stays kosher. And the other one is a custom context that has is provided by a plugin, which again, we're going to talk about in just a moment, uh, which allows your key bindings to activate or deactivate themselves depending on whether there's a terminus tab open in the window with a specific tag or not. So the three bindings. The first is shift control enter, which is bound to terminus send string and just sends a standard new line into the terminal tagged Python REPL if it happens to exist. And uh, this is actually a key that is a default key in Sublime Text. It actually inserts a new line on top of the line that you're currently in. But in a Python file, it will do this instead, assuming that uh, this terminal actually exists. And the other two bindings are both using control enter, but they their contexts make them mutually exclusive. So either one or the other will run depending on whether or not there's a terminus tag, uh, tagged terminal already open in the window. The first one, if there isn't already such a tagged uh, terminal, will just use the build command to execute that build system that we saw just a moment ago. And this will execute that build regardless of what build happens to be selected in the menu. So that will start the uh, terminal uh, running for us and shift it off to the right because that's what the build system does. The other one is what triggers if there actually already is a terminal and that uses the send selection to terminus, the command that is defined in the plugin to send selected text to the tagged terminal. So you can use control enter to either open the terminal or send text to it depending on the state of the operation. And both of those are handled by the plugin, which we can see right here. And again, we're not going to go into a ton of detail in this. So Suffice it to say that this send selection to terminus command sends either the whole content of the file if the selection is empty or the discrete selected sections of text to the specific terminal by using the built-in terminus command. So there's not a lot to that you need to do for this. It basically just automating the selecting text and pasting it into the terminal for all intents and purposes. And the second part of this is an onquery context that provides uh, in an event listener, I should say, that provides the custom context that allows those key bindings to allow themselves to be mutually exclusive. And if you'd like to learn more about how to create plugins like this or event listeners like this, particularly, say, for creating your own custom key context for activating and deactivating keys, well, down in the description of the video, there's a link to my plugin 101 playlist where uh, you can see all of the videos on the channel. More will be coming soon where we're talking and teaching you how to become a plugin author in Sublime Text and teaching you what you need to know to do stuff just like this.
Now here we have a sample Python file for us to test this with. And we just have some variables here and the print statement on the end. Now, the first key in our, our key bindings was shift control enter, which should send a new line to a terminus view. But we'll see if I press it here, what I actually get is lines being added above the cursor. And that's because the context on that key doesn't apply. There's not a terminal already open right now. There's no REPL open in this window. So the normal key binding is applying here and it's including lines up above. Of course, you might want to use different keys for something like this if you rely on that particular functionality or you wouldn't be able to use it otherwise. Now, what we can do here if we want to start one of these things up is press control enter, which as we saw, there wasn't already a terminal. So one is created and that launches the build and runs it. And the only output we see here is done. This is one of those things that can confuse people that are unfamiliar with REPLs if you're new to Python. And that's because when you tell Python to run a specific file, as we did here in the build system, it does that, but the only thing that generates any output for you to see is something that you specifically use to print output, such as the print statement on line nine of this file. So you don't see any of the other stuff, you just see the line nine doing something there. Um, and that can cause a lot of confusion. But now that that has actually been done, if we jump over to the terminal, the prompt is still here because of that minus I we added so we can see the value of variables like the X variable or the value of the name variable. And if we wanted to, we could even change the value of the name variable uh, here as well to my other uh, name, my real name, if you will, eh, and still see the exact same value. Now, if we went over here and selected this text here, this is the text that assigns the name uh, and then does that little manipulation on it. And now if I, with this text selected, when I press control enter, it gets sent via the plugin to the terminal on the right where the code is actually executed and the name gets reset back to what it was previously. Now you got to be careful with this because new lines are Python's uh, information that you're finished typing something. So if you were to do something like select some text and not provide, uh, not select the whole line as we did previously, but just part of the line here, we went right to the end, but not down. When you run it, the code gets sent over, but it doesn't actually get executed. That's why we have the binding for shift control enter, which actually sends just a new line. So to build, uh, you can build up a line of text and ship it off so we can execute code that way. And and one other thing that this particular plugin does, if you'd like to do so, is you can, if there's no text selected at all, if all of the selections in the file are empty, they're just cursors and nothing is selected, when you trigger the key binding, uh, that will cause the plugin to send the entire content of the file over. And in that case, you actually can see it interpreting the lines of text because it's being entered into the REPL loop of the Python interpreter. And of course, you could use this for other things as well. The first thing that might come readily to mind is if you're a database person, you could use this to have a database uh, query of some sort open and run the whole thing to the database via an external uh, tool, or maybe even just select part of something and execute statements that way if you wanted to. This just scratches the surface of the functionalities that you can get out of something like this. And it's just a very simple demonstration of how with just a tiny bit of glue code and existing functionalities, you can really build yourself something amazing. And I hope you found this useful and informative. And if you have, please show your support for the channel by using those buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share as you deem appropriate. And if you liked what you saw here and you'd like to see more, you probably want to ring the bell notification icon as well so you'll know when new videos become available on the channel. And until the next one, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.